Hey guys, today I'll show you a science fiction thriller TV series named Pantheon Season 2. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Previously on last season, Caspian, the clone of the founder of Logo Rhythms, took power and began addressing the issue of cognitive decline in uploaded human consciousness. He also attempted to resurrect the first uploaded person to rule the virtual world. Change had already begun, and the world teetered on the brink of destruction. Once the public learned the truth about uploaded intelligence, they were righteously indignant. Protests and marches filled the streets as they opposed the project that uploaded human minds. To quell the unrest, the government announced a temporary shutdown of the network, isolating the uploaded individuals in an outer virtual world. Maddie's hometown enforced a curfew policy, prohibiting the use of any network and electricity from 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. the following day. Feeling defiant, Maddie climbed a signal tower alone, ready to install a transmitter to restore her phone's network. As she gazed into the distance, an extraordinary sight unfolded before her. Glowing spheres rose from the rooftops of every house, connecting with one another to quickly form an intricate electrical grid. Then a human-like apparition rose from the grid. It greeted Maddie, and she immediately recognized it as her father, David. Overwhelmed with emotion, tears filled her eyes. David was the first person uploaded by Logo Rhythms and had sacrificed himself to reveal the truth at the end of the first season. As father and daughter looked at each other, another female apparition appeared in the grid. Maddie recognized her as Lori, the stock trader who had been uploaded by the trading company she worked for and turned into a tool for making money. As her consciousness was fading, Lori recorded a valuable video that let the whole world hear her voice and learn about the existence of uploaded intelligence. The next apparition was the computer engineer Chanda, also an uploaded individual. Fearing that the truth about uploaded intelligence would lead to their erasure, he ultimately broke with David and Lori. At the end of last season, it was Chanda who controlled the missiles that destroyed Lori's server, hastening her demise. At that moment, several uploaded individuals declared that they were neither ghosts nor aliens, not machines nor gods. Yet, they could command missiles to destroy the world, paralyze a town with their power, blow up airplanes and cause power outages in hospitals, plunging the world into chaos. As more and more uploaded individuals began to appear, tugging at the electrical grid as if trying to break into the human world, the people in the houses unplugged their electronics and the uploaded individuals disappeared in an instant. Suddenly, shouts from Maddie's friends came from below the tower. When she looked back at the sky, all was quiet again. It seemed that it was all just a hallucination. Urged on by her friends, Maddie quickly installed the signal transmitter and soon everyone's phones received a signal. Maddie excitedly told them that with more base stations, they could have a real network signal area. But just as she finished speaking, gunshots rang out. An angry man with a gun approached them, shooting the transmitter and warning Maddie that restoring the network was impossible. They wouldn't allow those things to come back. The friends explained that Maddie had connected to an intranet limited to the town, without the capability to connect to the internet controlled by the government. Their intention was merely to keep everyone in touch. The man clearly didn't believe their smelly bullshit. He had been watching Maddie, having discovered she moved a server into her home and that her father David was an employee of Logo Rhythms. Despite the government's power cut, their home generator was still running. The man sternly warned Maddie to abandon the idea. With him around, it was impossible to restore the network to the area. Then he left. Maddie returned home to find two men dressed in suits sitting in the living room. She feared that her clandestine transmitter installation had been exposed and began to hurriedly explain. Her mother interrupted her, pulling her into the room. As her mother packed their bags, she informed Maddie that they were taking a trip to Washington to attend a hearing. Government personnel who had seen them at the town's protest had sent two staff members to escort them to the committee. Now, the government needed to assess whether restoring the network would be safe. Maddie was against this. She couldn't stand the thought of those ignorant people painting her father as some mad digital monster. In her eyes, her father had been a diligent and honest man, a messenger of love and justice. Her mother didn't pressure her to attend the hearing, deciding to face the inquiry alone to clear her husband's name. Before leaving, Maddie told her mother that she had successfully connected her phone to the network. Her mother, incredulous, took out her phone and indeed the signal was strong. She patted her daughter on the shoulder, praising her, saying her father would have been proud. After bidding farewell to her mother, Maddie decided to continue building the network to keep the townspeople connected. 
At the Norwegian secret base of Logo Rhythms, Caspian and a group of executives were grappling with the problem of restoring consciousness defects. The board was covered in dense algorithms and theories proposed by Caspian, which the executives found to be fantastical and unachievable. Communication between both parties had reached a deadlock, and the meeting ended abruptly. Back in his office, Caspian used special glasses to summon the digital brain of Logo Rhythms' founder, Steven, for assistance. He was reminded that he could seek out the original technology developers, one of whom was David. Perhaps he could find some answers. Caspian turned off his glasses and accessed the backed-up brain data of David. However, this David was just an early copy, devoid of emotions, whose daily task was coding. As Caspian approached David, he was shocked to see David playing solitaire. He immediately sought out the company's senior engineer, Dr. Peter. Peter explained that this version of David was basic and unaware of his identity, with advanced functions restricted. To activate intuition and non-linear inspiration, emotional memories and connections to his family would have to be stimulated. However, this could also cause irreversible consequences. Peter hoped Caspian was prepared for the psychological toll. Caspian knew time was running out. Once the government lifted the network restrictions, countries would accelerate their uploaded human projects, and a virtual world without rulers could pose a severe threat to reality. While Caspian struggled to find a solution, security caught a woman who had trespassed into the company's restricted area. Her name was Renee, a former Logo Rhythms employee. Her job had been to play the role of Caspian's mother to ensure his growth trajectory mirrored that of the company's founder, Stephen, and to continue his legacy by finding a solution to the defects. Renee demanded a private chat with the CEO of Logo Rhythms. She argued for her return to the company, not wanting to be dismissed after dedicating 20 years of her life to Caspian's project. The CEO said he would consider it and asked Renee to wait patiently. Renee, not concealing her irritation, gave the CEO 24 hours to decide, threatening to reveal to the public that Caspian was actually Stephen's clone. Maddie's mother had already arrived in Washington, the political center where crowds are everywhere, waving banners and chanting in a strong demand for the government to cancel the uploading of human consciousness. Meanwhile, Maddie at home had called her friends over. They were discussing whether the upload of consciousness was a scam, and Maddie was immersed in memories of her daily life with her father. On the other side, Caspian tried to awaken David's consciousness by leveraging his longing for his family, following previous methods, but the attempt failed. He instructed Peter to delete this copy and to think of other methods. The CEO suggested that since David missed his family, perhaps they could bring his family to him. Caspian immediately refused, not wanting Maddie to endure the pain of losing her father again, once in body and once in consciousness. However, the CEO had other plans and found Renee, promising her a return to the company if she could bring Maddie there. The next day, the hearing proceeded as scheduled. In the solemn courtroom, government officials bombarded Maddie's mother with questions. She responded fluently, deftly avoiding key issues until an official aggressively slandered the late David and claimed that Maddie's mother was spouting nonsense. Unable to bear it, she blurted out the truth that the lead engineer of the UI was Peter from Logo Rhythms, who should be answering questions. This caused an uproar as Peter had been arrested for leaking secrets, but had returned to the company at Caspian's insistence to work on fixing defects. Some officials accused Maddie's mother of lying as Peter was seen as a hero who dared to speak the truth, but her testimony triggered an unavoidable investigation into Peter. Meanwhile, in the town, Maddie was promoting her developed software that allowed residents to connect to their local network. She soon realized that the man who had threatened her before was stalking her again. Frightened, she clutched her computer and ran into an alley. Panting and nervously looking around in a corner, a woman claiming to be a friend of Caspian's approached her, saying that Caspian had restored an original version of her father's upload file and that they could continue uploading her father. Maddie suddenly remembered that this woman was Renee, who had played the role of Caspian's mother. She confronted Renee about her reasons for seeking her out, to which Renee replied that Caspian needed her help. Confused by her intentions, Maddie left, saying her father is dead, and ran back home. At night, Maddie went out to deliver eggs to her friends when suddenly a red pickup started tailing her. She glanced back, and to her dismay, it was that stalking man again. Maddie couldn't help but pick up the pace, but the stalking man showed no signs of letting her go. Scared out of her wits, Maddie pedaled home as fast as she could. Just as the man was about to catch up, she ditched her bike and dashed through her front door. Fumbling for her keys, she managed to lock herself in at the last second, taking refuge in the kitchen. 
But the man was relentless, kicking at the door. Maddie quickly pulled out a dagger and hid in the shadows. Before long, the man entered the house, and just as Maddie found herself in grave danger, a shadowy figure appeared behind him, and he was knocked out, cold as shit. It turned out to be Renee coming to Maddie's aid. Maddie realized that unless she agreed to meet with Caspian, Renee wouldn't let her off easily. After some thought, she agreed to follow Renee to Logo Rhythm's secret base. Upon arriving in Norway, Maddie curiously surveyed her surroundings and saw Caspian, who was in a meeting. Caspian was both surprised and delighted by Maddie's unexpected visit, but his mood shifted when he saw Renee standing next to her. He confronted her, demanding to know why she brought Maddie here. Renee claimed she wanted to help Caspian, but he couldn't forgive her for previously posing as his mother and deceiving his emotions. Caspian ordered Renee to be expelled from the company. The CEO seemed to comply, but had his own agenda. Caspian didn't want to hurt Maddie anymore and urged her to go home. Maddie insisted that she needed confirmation that all backup data of her father had been deleted. Otherwise, she wouldn't leave. She was there to ensure her father's soul could rest in peace. Caspian claimed he was close to solving the degradation issue of uploaded consciousness. He said he could fix her father's data, granting him eternal life. Maddie couldn't understand why Caspian was so determined to resurrect her father. Caspian asserted with conviction that it was his responsibility. The one who breached the system's integrity had to create a god for a virtual world because once the world's networks are restored, other uploaded intelligences would come back online. Despite their flaws of consciousness degradation, there was still time to destroy the human world before being eliminated. Only uploaded beings could stop other uploads. Maddie felt that this theory was something the CEO had instilled in Caspian. She warned her friend not to be misled and controlled by him. But Caspian thought Maddie was being alarmist. Now he was the boss, but Maddie was unimpressed. She felt that the CEO still held the real power. The two parted ways on bad terms. Meanwhile, as Maddie and Caspian were arguing, the CEO sneaked Renee into the company's secret cryo storage. They found a complete brain of a certain Steven, suggesting that Caspian, as a clone, wasn't the CEO's only option. He was simply using Caspian's talents to fix the flaws of the uploaded beings. Maddie, who was fast asleep, dreamt that her father was resurrected only to become a monstrous creature, which jolted her awake from the nightmare. Concerned and unable to shake off her unease, Maddie sought out Caspian again to warn him to be wary of the CEO. Caspian, sensing that it wasn't safe to speak freely, took Maddie to the company's patent room. This place housed a trove of unreleased research findings, such as the latest model of AR glasses that could block all electronic surveillance when triggered by the wearer's facial expressions. Caspian assured Maddie that her worries were unfounded, since he was the only hope for logo rhythms. He believed for the time being, he was the only one capable of fixing the vulnerabilities in their system. Caspian considered David as the only trustworthy candidate for an uploaded deity. Maddie, however, remained unconvinced. She suggested that Caspian shift his focus to developing other uploaded beings instead of tormenting his father further, as she could no longer bear the pain of losing him again. Maddie continued to analyze the situation, noting that Russia and China also had uploaded individuals, and even the NSA in the United States had its candidates. Perhaps they could select someone from this group. Caspian pointed out that the NSA had uploaded an astronaut named Joey, but he couldn't just hand over the repair algorithm to her, as he didn't know her well enough. He only had clarity on David's character. Maddie tried to persuade Caspian to investigate Joey, but Caspian immediately refused, stating that he didn't have the luxury of time. With the world's networks soon to be restored, more uploaded individuals would emerge, and the priority was to develop a solution. Switching scenes to Washington, D.C. on the television news, an official, who had previously attacked Maddie's mother, was giving an interview. In his view, the uploading fiasco was nothing more than a scam, and Maddie's mother's testimony was nonsense. He accused her of using absurd stories to scare the public, and it's a preposterous notion for her to claim that tech companies would launch nuclear weapons through the cloud. Maddie's mother, accompanied by a congresswoman, watched the program. She had thought that government officials would be among the first to believe the truth about uploaded intelligence. The congresswoman indicated that it was not about the truth. The political power represented by the official wanted to restore the network quickly. At that moment, the congresswoman received a call. It turned out that based on Maddie's mother's testimony, Peter would make another appearance to cooperate with the investigation by the network committee. Back at the base, Maddie was enjoying her lunch when Peter voluntarily sat across from her. He informed Maddie that his return to Logo Rhythms wasn't voluntary. 
After publicly supporting actions against the company, he was arrested and only avoided jail thanks to Caspian's intervention, resulting in his extradition to Norway by the military. Maddie asked Peter about Joey to find out if she met Caspian's criteria for the perfect uploaded person. Peter mentioned that astronaut Joey was dissatisfied with her situation in a server in the special district. Just as Peter was about to elaborate further, the CEO suddenly appeared and took Peter to the office. It turned out they had received a request to hand over Peter. Before parting, the CEO and the military official threatened Peter with perjury. If he supported Maddie's mother's statements in any way, he would spend the rest of his life confined to a tiny cube. In other words, he would be forcibly uploaded, and Maddie would also be in danger. Unable to contain his anger, Peter cursed at them in anger. Meanwhile, Maddie was engrossed in studying Joey's profile. To her, this woman who would rather risk her life for the sake of national interests embodied a commendable adventurous spirit, perfectly aligning with Caspian's expectations. Yet Caspian insisted on having Maddie's father become the ideal, uploaded entity because he was the only one who could help Caspian achieve a breakthrough. Caspian questioned Maddie whether she yearned to see her father revived and granted immortality. But Maddie felt that such actions went against nature. Mourning for lost loved ones was the right choice. She angrily accused Caspian of being overly selfish. He was only interested in proving himself smarter than Stephen by fixing flaws, completely disregarding others' feelings. It is because of others that humanity as a species has continued to this day. Maddie's words struck a chord with Caspian, prompting him to consider that the root of the flaws might not lie in the uploaded individuals themselves, but rather in their isolation. Social interaction could potentially have a therapeutic effect on the memory defects of uploaded individuals. However, human interaction with uploaded beings is limited due to rate constraints. If one could obtain the code for human and uploaded being interaction, isolate the recursive components, and construct a machine of love to implant within the uploaded individuals, a breakthrough might be possible. Without hesitation, Caspian began compiling the code. Due to the massive scale of the project, the entire base's systems nearly collapsed. The CEO sensed the anomaly and confronted Caspian, asking what had just happened. Caspian revealed that he had found a solution to the integrity flaws, the glowing ice crystal before them. The CEO was overjoyed, praising Caspian and eager to begin testing on David's clone. Caspian stopped the CEO as he needed Maddie's permission. With the hard drive containing the flaw-fixing method in hand, Caspian approached Maddie. Whether to revive David was now entirely up to her. After much internal conflict, Maddie told Caspian that she wanted to see her father once more. The scene shifts to Washington, where Dr. Peter had to retract his previous statements under pressure, admitting his words were misguided. This revelation shocked Maddie's mother, who was in the audience. The official pressed Peter, asking if he agreed that the UI crisis was a hoax, and insinuated that the farce was abetted by the congresswoman for political gain by exploiting public fear. Peter did not respond, and the hearing could not continue. The chairperson announced a recess until the truth could be clarified. Outside the courthouse, the public clamored for Peter to reveal the truth. Maddie's mother pushed through the crowd, calling out Peter's name. Peter turned and offered a heartfelt apology. Those words were familiar to her. Peter had said the same when he handed her the hard drive containing David's consciousness. Realizing something, she rushed back into the hearing room and found that Peter had intentionally left behind a glasses case. Inside it, there was a pair of glasses with recording and storage capabilities. Putting on the glasses, Maddie's mother witnessed the conversation between Peter and Maddie during their meal, clear as day. She learned that her daughter had gone to Norway alone, and the data center of Logo Rhythms was there. This was clearly a hint left by Peter. Shortly after, the hearing resumed, and Maddie's mother was summoned again to explain the discrepancy between her testimony and Peter's, and whether she was accusing Peter of lying. She replied that she had told everything that Logo Rhythms had uploaded her husband's consciousness and treated him as a commercial asset. The official questioned why this contradicted Peter's claim that Logo Rhythms lacked such technology. Maddie's mother suggested that perhaps Peter had never been to Norway, where the company's secret base truly was. With her words, the room plunged into chaos. The committee voted immediately to send investigators to Norway. The news quickly reached the CEO, who urged Caspian to conduct the tests for patching the system's vulnerabilities. They only had two hours left before the investigators would arrive at the base. A staff member initiated the startup of David's source code, and Caspian inserted the hard drive, injecting the repair program into David's system like applying a patch. 
As everyone anticipated with bated breath, David's system was successfully upgraded, and the familiar greeting rang out once more. Maddie, puzzled, questioned the repetition of the phrase that her father had already uttered at the startup of the source code. David clarified that he was not greeting Maddie, but someone named Mist, which only added to Maddie's astonishment and confusion. Just then, the staff detected that David's matrix was robust and the data was complete. This meant that Caspian had successfully resolved the system flaws in the uploaded individuals. Maddie was submerged in joy, momentarily forgetting her earlier doubts. However, before she could celebrate, the staff member surreptitiously deleted David's source code. Sensing something amiss, Maddie rushed forward in an attempt to grasp her father, but she couldn't touch him, as the uploaded version of her father was nothing more than a string of code. Caspian attempted to intervene, but he was restrained by a colleague and could not move. The room was filled with the agonizing cries of David and the helpless sobs of Maddie as she experienced the loss of her father once again, a loss that was permanent this time. As for Caspian, he had outlived his usefulness in the CEO's eyes. His men suggested taking immediate action against Caspian, but the CEO decided to wait. Perhaps Stephen would like to see him. In the CEO's mind, Caspian was always just a copy, never able to surpass the original Stephen. From the very beginning, all he wanted was for Stephen to be the perfect, uploaded being. Subsequently, the CEO locked Maddie and Caspian in the lab and went to the cold storage to prepare for reviving their founder, Stephen. Soon, Stephen was successfully uploaded, and they implanted the memories he had missed over the past 18 years. Consequently, he learned of Caspian's existence as his clone and the presence of other uploaded individuals. The CEO informed Stephen that Caspian's project had been successful, and now that the clone was redundant, it was time for Caspian to be eliminated. Meanwhile, Caspian was actively searching for a way to bring David back to life once more, while Maddie sat on the ground, hugging her legs helplessly. Caspian regretted not heeding Maddie's advice earlier to be wary of the CEO. It seemed that the CEO had been plotting this for a long time. Caspian felt immense guilt for insisting on reviving David. Maddie knew that Caspian had good intentions, hoping for a reunion between father and daughter, but the CEO was the real executioner. Caspian encouraged Maddie to pull herself together, stressing that their immediate priority was to escape. Only by surviving could they expose the wrongdoings of the CEO to the government. Bolstered by Caspian's encouragement, Maddie adjusted her mindset and together they cooperated to open the door before the CEO's arrival. Outside the base, the investigators are about to land. In a moment of urgency, an executive temporarily shut down the network. He handed the hard drive containing Stephen's consciousness over to Renee because she was the only one not listed in the company's personnel records. She had a better chance of escaping and could fully ensure the safety of the data on the disk. Renee understood her mission and task. She took the hard drive and retreated immediately. Caspian and Maddie, through the surveillance, discovered that the CEO was chasing them with a gun. They immediately hacked into the company's system and cut off the elevator's power as soon as the CEO entered, trapping him inside. After accomplishing this, the duo carried the hard drive with the solution and escaped to the ground floor. Suddenly, a truck sped towards them and stopped right in front of them. Just as they were puzzled, Carrie, who once played the role of Caspian's father, appeared at the scene. He escorted Caspian and Maddie onto the plane, helping them flee the den of evil. The CEO, trapped in the elevator, was soon apprehended by the investigators. On the plane, Maddie recalled the scene of her father's recent revival. She remembered her father mentioning a name, Mist. Curious, she plugged the hard drive into the computer and a dialogue box promptly appeared. Soon after, Maddie received a greeting message. Maddie asked who it was and the reply came, saying it's her little sister, Mist. Maddie's eyes widened in disbelief, wondering what was going on. On the 40th day of the internet ban, the streets and alleys of the government center in Washington were filled with protesting crowds, all calling for a safe return to the online world. Maddie and Caspian arrived at a hotel, narrowly escaping from logo rhythms. After settling down, Maddie mustered the courage to open her computer again. She was still preoccupied with the recent events. After merging with the repair algorithm, David talked to Mist and even referred to her as Maddie's sister. This left Maddie both curious and confused. Caspian explained that the repair algorithm was a dynamic evolutionary algorithm, completed by a part of the live code from Lori and David. The so-called live code is more like a clone or a digital malformation. Caspian made an analogy. It's as if it was supposed to be one of a pair of twins, but due to developmental problems, it ended up as a lump of flesh with only teeth, hair, and skin. Maddie countered, asking if it was a tumor, shouldn't they cut it out? 
Caspian prevented her, stating that whatever Mist is, she's the method to fix the defects. Then Caspian examined Mist's logical pathways and found that she trusted Maddie very much and was eager to help. However, Maddie was still unable to accept this strange sister. She decided to go look for her mother first. Arriving at the hotel where her mother was staying, Maddie spotted her mother, who looked worried and distraught amidst the crowd. She called out to her and sprinted towards her. The mother hugged her tightly in a surge of emotion. She asked her daughter how she ended up going to Norway alone. Maddie explained the whole situation and mentioned that Caspian had repaired the defects in the UIs. The mother hoped that Maddie would share all of her experiences with the authorities, specifically with the congresswoman she had met at a hearing and trusted. Maddie refused, fearing that it might put Caspian in danger, considering he only had her by his side. As the congresswoman arrived at the hotel entrance, Maddie had to hastily say goodbye to her mother. She and Caspian had to continue searching for the uploaded individuals and confront the now seemingly invincible Stephen. Back with Caspian, Maddie found that he was researching how to locate an uploaded researcher, Joey, whom he suspected was hidden in the Department of Defense's servers and connected to a classified network. The challenge they faced was how to break in. Caspian thought they might start with contractors to find a vulnerable endpoint to enter. Maddie suggested they could try starting with Joey's family, as she had found out that Joey had volunteered for the upload, with the sole condition that her family could access her uploaded consciousness. Following this lead, they made their way to Joey's home. Initially, Joey's husband was hostile and even tried to drive Maddie and Caspian away, until Caspian mentioned Joey's defects and that he had found a way to fix them. This made Joey's husband agree to let them inside. Then Joey's sister came out. To help take care of her sister's young children, she had given up her own life. She questioned whether these two young people really had the capability to fix her sister's defects or if they were just using Joey as an experiment. Maddie said she understood how Joey's sister felt. Taking responsibility for someone else's life was not an easy thing. Maddie guessed that another reason Joey's sister had moved in with her was the hope of seeing her sister again in the virtual world. Watching a loved one disappear is excruciatingly painful, and she didn't want others to endure that pain. Her words moved Joey's sister, who then agreed to let them communicate with Joey. Meanwhile, Renee, who had narrowly escaped from Logo Rhythms, sneaked onto a cruise ship and arrived in Germany. With all her savings, she bought a car with the most powerful processor she could find. After plugging in the hard drive that contained Stephen's consciousness, the two were finally able to communicate. Stephen took control of the car and initiated its autonomous driving mode. His destination was an Air Force base hundreds of miles away, as he was certain that with the help of satellite relay stations, the military network would still be operational. At the same time, the congresswoman learned from Maddie's mother that Peter had once developed a tracking program capable of locating uploaded individuals. The NSA had developed a security program that could dismantle uploaded intelligences. If Peter cooperated with them and handed over his tracking program, they would exonerate him of all charges. After consideration, Peter agreed to work with the government. Renee's car arrived at the Air Force Base. As it approached the security checkpoint, the vehicle suddenly accelerated forward, charging through the area. The soldiers decisively opened fire. They managed to bring the car to a stop and cautiously approached to inspect it when they realized it was empty. Renee had already exited the vehicle. Stephen had been controlling the car the entire time and successfully infiltrated the base. He accessed the military network and manipulating the satellite transmitters, uploaded himself into the cloud-based virtual world. This was an unfamiliar world of icy landscapes, void of any light, eerily silent. Stephen took a few steps forward and noticed what seemed like a flicker of firelight in an ice chamber not too far away. It turned out that Chanda, who had escaped previously, was hiding there with three other uploads. However, one of the uploads was barely clinging to life due to a deteriorating consciousness. Confronted with Stephen's unexpected visit, Chanda and the others were on high alert, ready for battle. Stephen made his way to higher ground and laid out everything he knew, including how he had been resurrected for all to see. This revealed to Chanda and the others that Caspian had found a way to fix the defects. Stephen, flawless now, saw himself as the ruler of all uploads, claiming that once the networks were restored, humans would start hunting them down. He called for unity to fight against humanity. One of the uploads immediately refused, pledging never to betray her country. After her declaration, she engaged Stephen in battle, but she was plagued by defects and couldn't stand a chance against a perfect upload like Stephen. Effortlessly, Stephen destroyed her consciousness code. Chanda and the others were left in stunned silence. Stephen was now unmatched. 
The scene shifted to Caspian. He put on VR goggles and through a private encrypted path, successfully made contact with astronaut Joey. But before Caspian could speak, Joey confronted him about why he had told her family about her defects and that she had learned from the NSA that Caspian had found a way to fix them. Caspian explained that this was the very reason for his visit. He could fix Joey, but in return she would need to supervise the other uploads. Joey, fed up with the life of an upload, launched an attack, ejecting Caspian from the virtual world. Forced offline, Caspian felt that persuading Joey was hopeless and urged Maddie to leave quickly. He wasn't sure if Joey could truly become the god of uploads he envisioned. Maddie disagreed and wanted to persist. While they were at an impasse, Joey's husband donned the VR goggles and came before his wife. He hugged her tightly, reproaching her for not sharing the truth with him. Joey explained that she had already volunteered her brain and was living in the cloud, unable to be by her family's side, which already made her feel indebted. To tell them that she was about to vanish would be too selfish and cruel. Joey's husband, unable to accept the complete loss of his wife, returned to the real world, and at gunpoint, he forced Caspian to heal his wife. With no other choice, Caspian plugged in the hard drive containing the repair algorithm and re-entered Joey's world. He revealed his code and the entire process to Joey, successfully dispelling her doubts. With the help of Mist, Joey completed the repair of her strength, becoming even more powerful than before. Although she couldn't guarantee she would become the deity Caspian hoped for, she promised she would take on her responsibilities. Turning to Steven, he dismantled the upload he had just dealt with, extracting a portion of the code. He then collated the data into two green beams of light and took control of Chanda and his companion to slice open their bodies and plunged the green beams inside them. Accompanied by agonized screams, Chanda and his companion underwent evolution. But before they could revel in their transformation, their bodies began to convulse. They fell to the ground in pain. Soon, Chanda grew horns on his head and a long tail from his back, while the companion sprouted a pair of wings and his body bulked up with muscle, turning them both into monstrous aberrations. Stephen proudly declared that he could rewrite and fix the algorithm. Now, he needed to find more uploads to join his ranks. By then, he would become the god ruling the entire world of UIs. Meanwhile, NSA and Peter developed a software called SafeSurf, which every household could obtain for free. The more people used it, the more effective the tracking program against uploads became. It would eliminate any sentient code, providing a certain degree of network security. Washington became one of the first regions to trial open networks. The scene shifts to Russia, where their UIs furiously pounded on keyboards, launching attacks on Ukraine. Because they utilized an excessive amount of quantum energy, the SafeSurf program quickly tracked down these uploads. Even though the Russian military detected the program, it was too late. Countless antivirus codes converged into a massive wave, rushing in through the ports with overwhelming speed and devouring the arrogant figure who had seemed invincible moments before. Watching the entire process on a big screen, NSA executives couldn't help but applaud. A subordinate came to report that the optimization speed of hyperparameters had far exceeded expectations. Peter, sensing something amiss, asked what the term hyperparameters meant. The executives smugly revealed that their opponents, the UIs, were very smart. So to eliminate them, they had added artificial intelligence to the Safe Surf program. The public praised the government-developed eradication program. Now, they could finally surf the internet without any concerns. Maddie has come to accept the existence of her sister, Mist. She even found an abandoned rice cooker to serve as Mist's physical body and fitted it with four mechanical legs. On the road, Maddie and Caspian discussed the future. They believed that Stephen would upload all of humanity into his world, thereby controlling the entire virtual realm. Only by finding an upload stronger than Stephen could they oppose him. At that moment, Stephen was ambitiously constructing his own kingdom. Skyscrapers rose rapidly, lining the landscape, and before long, a spectacular new world unfolded before their eyes, ethereal and dreamlike. Stephen stretched out his arms, proudly gazing upon the paradise he had created. Everything was just beginning. This place would soon become the starting point for a new universe. Back in the real world, Maddie and Caspian continued their search for that chosen UI who could truly counterbalance Stephen. This time, they set their sights on Olivia, a doctor working for MI6 and uploaded by the British Intelligence Service. She was committed to preventing conflicts between humans and UIs, and proposed that uploads were descendants of humanity, part of the same society, and must evolve and coexist peacefully. 
This notion coincided with Caspian's vision. Through a virtual private network, he accessed the British intelligence service and sent Olivia an encrypted link, inviting her to a zero-trust network meeting to discuss repairing the flaws in uploaded consciousnesses. Olivia received the message and went to the meeting as Caspian had requested, knowing that if the flaws were not fixed, she too would eventually perish. Upon arrival, to establish mutual trust, Caspian handed over a storage device that contained the complete process of how he discovered and resolved integrity vulnerabilities, transferring it all to Olivia. Caspian told Dr. Olivia that he wasn't sure how many UIs he could still repair. So far, he had fixed David, Stephen, and Joey. However, he wanted to apply his technique only to the right people, which was why he had sought out Olivia. After hearing this, Olivia felt there was someone who needed fixing more urgently than herself. It's Karimi, an UI from Iran, and the love of her life. She then shared her memories with Caspian, compressing the memory data into a file and passing it on to him. The story of how Olivia and Karimi met traces back to a seminar in 2019. At that time, Karimi insisted that UIs could threaten human society and the government must strengthen its oversight. However, Olivia believed that UIs could never be separated from humans. They must coexist, with UIs simply living in the cloud, otherwise no different from humans. The two engaged in a fierce debate. Olivia confessed that initially, because of their opposing views, she had an intense dislike for Karimi, wishing only to avoid him. Later, officials from MI6 approached her. As someone who had spent years researching UI theories, she saw this as an opportunity to get involved and prove her point. Without hesitation, she cooperated with MI6 to upload her own consciousness. But once she was truly in the cloud, she realized she had become a tool for MI6, busy with tedious tasks such as dealing with hacker attacks. Despite being busy, Olivia felt lonely until one day she met Karimi, who had also been uploaded. Everything began to change. The two lonely souls started meeting frequently, and their affection for each other grew warmer, experiencing a new life as humans do, embracing and tongue-massaging each other amidst the beautiful scenery. But unexpectedly, Karimi soon began to exhibit symptoms caused by his defects. He would convulse uncontrollably, his entire body limp and powerless. Since then, Olivia had never seen her lover again. On the other side, Stephen approached Karimi and offered him the hand of friendship. Stephen promised that if Karimi joined his camp, he would be able to fix his flaws and grant him immortality. Meanwhile, Chanda discovered that someone had leaked Caspian's name to the intelligence black market. As a result, six uploading nations now knew that Caspian held the key to the repair method. Realizing the gravity of the situation, Chanda knew he had to report to Stephen. But just as he was about to leave, the companion blocked his path and confessed to leaking the information. His intention was to find Caspian through others and seize the repair method for himself. Chanda tried to persuade him not to betray Stephen, warning of dire consequences. However, the man refused to be manipulated by Stephen, believing that only by completing the repair could he threaten Stephen's power. After learning about Olivia's ordeal, Caspian summoned Mist, preparing to use it to heal Olivia. But Olivia was worried that Caspian's repair method had limited uses and didn't want to take the risk before Karimi was healed. When Maddie asked how they could find Karimi, Olivia produced a bell, explaining that she and Karimi had created a two-way encrypted signal that only they could recognize. By pressing the bell, she could instantly transport to Karimi's side. Yet she hesitated to use it, fearing the pain of possibly losing her lover. Eventually, she gathered the courage to press the bell, and Karimi soon appeared behind her. Overjoyed, Olivia threw herself into her lover's hormone-let-go arms. However, Caspian noticed something amiss with the custom buildings outside, and questioned how Karimi managed to build them without depleting his energy. Just then, a mysterious figure stepped out from behind Karimi. It was Stephen. Olivia stepped forward to protect Karimi, anxiously asking why he was with Stephen. Stephen claimed he was there to help and had created a paradise for the uploaded beings. Karimi confirmed to Olivia that this was indeed the real Stephen, who had been resurrected and uploaded to the cloud, and he had the power to repair himself. Caspian denied this, claiming that he alone had the repair method. Then Stephen noticed Mist hiding behind Caspian and murmured that it was exactly what he needed. As Stephen approached, Olivia stood in his way. Stephen tried to convince Olivia not to believe Caspian's slanders about him, and he was earnestly trying to heal both her and Karimi. Caspian interjected, insisting he would heal them. To prevent Caspian from ruining his plans, Stephen silenced him and forcibly logged him out. Olivia, now aware of the whole truth, was not easily swayed by Stephen's deceit. She took Karimi's hand, ready to flee with mist. 
But in the next second, Stephen immobilized Karimi's feet, preventing him from moving. As Mist was about to fall into Stephen's hands, Olivia grabbed Stephen's collar and lifted him into the air. Despite several exchanges, Olivia was no match for Stephen and was thrown into a building, immobilized. Back online, Caspian realized that Olivia's energy would soon be depleted if the battle continued. He immediately ordered Mist to heal her. Once the system flaw was repaired, Olivia's combat strength was astonishing, and she quickly launched a counterattack against Steven. However, the commotion from the fight was soon detected by the Safe Surf program. Tens of thousands of deletion codes converged into a tornado, sweeping toward them. Seeing this, Caspian busily sought a method to break the code and restore Karimi's ability to move. Olivia, locked in fierce combat, caught sight of the Safe Surf program's deletion codes racing towards Karimi and Caspian. She immediately ceased fighting, and with great effort, she conjured a protective shield for her beloved. Then, turning to Karimi with a look of reluctance in her eyes, as if making a final farewell, she made the heartbreaking decision to sacrifice herself to save her lover. She drew the Safe Surf programs away, and within minutes, Olivia was completely surrounded. The potent Safe Surfers quickly erased all of her data. Karimi watched in agony as his love disappeared forever, leaving him in pain. After dealing with Olivia, the deletion codes turned their attention to Steven. A relentless chase ensued, with both parties weaving rapidly through the high-rise buildings. Taking advantage of this diversion, Caspian successfully unlocked Karimi. From above, Steven noticed mist and accelerated towards it. Fortunately, Caspian and the others were quick to act. Just as Steven was about to touch mist, they all left the server. Caught off guard, Steven had one of his hands eroded by the relentless safe surfers. Knowing he was outmatched, he promptly opened a portal and retreated to his lair. To prevent the deletion codes from spreading within him, Stephen didn't hesitate to sever his injured hand and placed it in a transparent glass container. As the codes were purged, all that remained in the container was a shapeless clump of wave that could freely change shape. Chanda exclaimed that it was the simplicity of the code that made the deletion program so efficient. Stephen informed the two that the Safe Surf program was designed to kill UIs without damaging their own infrastructure, a new weapon created by humanity out of fear, one they needed to face and overcome. Back in the real world, Maddie and Caspian were preparing to leave when suddenly two thugs got out of a car and kidnapped Caspian without a word. Maddie quickly hailed a taxi and asked Mist to initiate facial recognition to locate Caspian, but Mist couldn't find any facial data for Caspian. She asked Maddie if she remembered any distinguishing features of the kidnappers to narrow the search. Maddie closed her eyes, trying to recall the details. She remembered one of the kidnappers had a messy beard and wore a hat. Mist searched tirelessly, locking onto over 200 black cars in the area, but they were still clueless. Just as Maddie was about to lose hope, a photo detected by Mist caught her attention. The driver was one of the kidnappers. Mist began a search, but strangely, the man didn't appear in any government or criminal databases, not even on social media. The other two faces in the car yielded the same result. Maddie couldn't help but wonder who these people were. Mist reminded Maddie that Olivia had warned everyone that Caspian's identity had been leaked. Now, intelligence agencies from six cyber nations were searching for him, attempting to acquire the method to fix the flaw. This revelation jolted Maddie. She remembered seeing something on the dark web about people who would go to great lengths to erase all their online photos and documents. Even school pictures and family Facebook posts would be wiped clean. These individuals were known as the Mossad Ghosts. The scene shifts to the interior of Mossad, Israel's intelligence agency. Caspian awakens from unconsciousness to find himself in a dark interrogation room devoid of any other person. Directly above, a camera is mounted, and on the table lies a pair of VR glasses. Driven by curiosity, he puts on the glasses and soon is greeted by the image of an Israeli agent, an UI of Israeli intelligence. The agent revealed that they abducted Caspian because they wanted the method to repair the flaw. He promises Caspian protection and access to cutting-edge technology in return for healing himself. After all, he holds a significant position within the leadership. Caspian shares his vision of creating a just god, a being with power who only uses it for good deeds, a perfect upload capable of standing against tyrannical rule. To obtain the repair, one must find the memories that truly define themselves. He needs to see the Israeli agent's most authentic self. However, the Israeli agent had deliberately erased many memories prior to his upload, but to help Caspian understand him, he brings out a backup of those memories. 
Caspian learns about the Israeli agent's past. He was once a Mossad assassin who lost his legs in an explosion and was forced to kill a friend. These memories caused him immense pain, which he chose to erase at the time of his upload. But after extracting these memories, Caspian realizes they are not the Israeli agent's core memories. It's not until a buried childhood memory surfaces that the Israeli agent confronts his true pain. As a boy, he accidentally found a photograph under his brother's shoe insole, a picture of his brother with an Arab girl. Confused, he showed it to his father, resulting in a fierce argument. His father believed the girl's family were terrorists, and his brother could not stand against his own nation. But his brother, putting love above all, refused to compromise and left the Israel Defense Forces and his family. Due to the snitching, the two brothers became estranged, a pain that has always haunted him and eventually drove him to join Mossad and become the Israeli agent. With the agent's core memories in hand, Caspian suggests that building a fix also requires the code of another uploaded individual. The Israeli agent questions whether he could be the just god Caspian envisions. Caspian remains silent, clearly unable to recognize the agent as such. Feeling deceived, he accuses Caspian of being a fraud, demanding that since he provided what Caspian wanted, it's only fair that Caspian reciprocates. Cut to Maddie, who is tirelessly searching for a way to rescue Caspian. Mist retrieves Olivia's bell for her and suggests seeking Karimi's help, given the enmity between Iran and Israel. As an uploaded agent of Iranian intelligence, Karimi would surely be well-versed in Israel's defense systems. Maddie presses the bell and soon enough an IP address from Karimi appears on her computer. She promptly sets off to meet him. But since Olivia's demise, Karimi has been despondent, longing for his own end to join his beloved. Maddie implores Karimi to pull himself together, reminding him that Olivia's sacrifice was meant to ensure her loved ones could continue to live better lives. If the flaw isn't fixed, Karimi will soon crash and be forever separated from Olivia. Maddie hopes that Karimi will help her find Caspian to fight their same enemy Stephen for vengeance for Olivia. It is only after hearing this that Karimi agrees to assist Maddie. He reveals that the Israeli intelligence has a stronghold in Cyprus. It's very likely that Caspian is imprisoned there. Meanwhile, Rene followed Stephen's instructions, registered a shell company, and purchased a large quantity of uploading equipment. As of now, she has already recruited 20 individuals for Stephen's team to be uploaded. Rene couldn't wait to don the VR glasses and enter Stephen's world, eager to be uploaded herself as soon as possible. Stephen urged her not to rush the process. He still needed her in the human world to find a representative figure who could appeal to and lead more people to join his cause. He had already identified the perfect candidate, a young boy suffering from progeria, a condition that ages him nine times faster than normal. Renee's mission was to upload the young boy and to recruit more individuals for uploading. She located the young boy without delay, first donating a substantial amount for his treatment and then promising him the life he had always dreamt of. Plagued by progeria, the boy agreed without hesitation, seeing uploading as his only chance for rebirth. In his campaign for revenge against human society, Stephen was also brewing his own plan. He claimed that if humans had designed antivirus programs for UIs, then he would reciprocate with a virus for humanity. At the same time, he discovered that it was Chanda's companion who had leaked the information about the repair algorithm being in Caspian's hands. The man no longer concealed the truth, admitting everything. He felt that although Stephen touted himself as humanity's savior, his actions were more akin to bringing about its apocalypse. To punish the traitor, Stephen deliberately used quantum energy to lure the Safe Surf cleanup program to them, then immobilized his stinky feet, rendering him immobile. Stephen escaped before the cleanup program arrived, leaving the man to be completely erased. Chanda witnessed the entire process and realized that Stephen had become obsessed with his goal, willing to resort to any means necessary to achieve it. After much deliberation, Chanda called Maddie's mother, because after watching videos of her at the hearings, he believed that she was an ally of the UIs. Chanda informed Maddie's mother that Stephen was about to release new plagues. He had designed a virus more infectious and deadly, capable of killing millions in just a few weeks. As the viruses multiplied, humans would become reliant on technology and choose to upload themselves. Chanda hoped she could stop Stephen's mad course of action. Having obtained crucial information from Karimi, Maddie flew to Cyprus. With Mist's assistance, they deployed dozens of drones to distract the guards at the base. 
Mist also hacked into the base's communication and security systems, locating the cell where Caspian was held. In the end, with the efforts of Maddie and Mist, Caspian was rescued. As the sun set, Maddie and Caspian gazed into the distance, contemplating the great change about to unfold, a change of which people remained oblivious. Caspian told Maddie that he had intended to have the Israeli agent confront Stephen, but the agent's emotions were too unstable. Maddie replied that Karimi wasn't suitable either. The repair algorithm might restore his abilities, but it couldn't heal his broken heart. Caspian murmured that there was no one else. They couldn't let Stephen take control of everything, so he had to be the god himself. Under Stephen's instruction, Renee went to the renowned vaccine company. Using a fake ID, she infiltrated the vaccine production workshop and seizing the moment, covertly introduced Stephen's virus. At the same time, Maddie's mother found Dr. Peter and informed him of Stephen's evil plot to unleash a new plague on humanity. Peter rushed to the CDC to reveal the truth about Stephen's uploaded consciousness following his brain's cryogenic preservation and his vengeful release of a safe surf program. Stephen planned to deploy a biological virus to force everyone to upload. However, the lawmakers did not believe Peter because he could not provide more details, such as which booster or vaccine was tainted. Given the current situation, they could not advise the CEO to take any action. Angry, Peter left the CDC and called Maddie's mother to explain the situation. Maddie's mother replied that Maddie and Caspian had just contacted her, requesting a meeting for an urgent matter. Peter immediately drove to the designated location. After the four met, Maddie introduced her sister Miss to her mother and hoped that her mother and Peter could help persuade Caspian to abandon his crazy idea of uploading himself. Peter stated that Stephen was much crazier than Caspian, then took out a copy Chanda had sent. After learning of Stephen's terror, Caspian became even more determined to upload. Everyone supported Caspian's idea except for Maddie, who remained silent. After Maddie's mother and Peter left, Maddie approached Caspian alone to urge him to reconsider his decision. Caspian didn't understand why Maddie was now against his upload. Their conversation escalated into a heated argument, and in a moment of pressure, Maddie finally revealed her feelings, declaring her love for Caspian, calling him a fool. She added that her father chose to upload himself because he was terminally ill, leaving him no choice. Now they had many choices. At that moment, Mist volunteered that she could defeat Stephen. Caspian remained silent, and Maddie decided to send Mist, since the journey from here to the data center in Norway and then to the surgery was too risky, with any step possibly leading to errors. Thus, Mist entered Stephen's server through the backdoor program port left by Chanda. Transforming into a sword, she snuck up behind Stephen and shouted her intent to end him. Stephen asked for her reasons, stating that informing the accused of their charges is a courtesy. Mist replied that Stephen was planning genocide, attempting to release a virus to eliminate humanity. Stephen countered, questioning how he could develop a world for UIs if he intended to destroy humanity. In contrast, humanity's actions were definitive. They developed the Safe Surf virus program to eliminate all uploads. Stephen justified his plan by claiming the sacrifice of millions of human lives was for a greater good. He argued that humanity only knew how to create greenhouse effects, destroy the environment, and incite wars around the world, actions that would lead to genocide. He claimed uploading was their last chance. Mist left without a word. Maddie and Caspian saw Mist returning and hastily inquired about her encounter. Mist wasn't sure how to respond, describing it as a bizarre meeting. She had been ready to fight, but Stephen had suggested a negotiation instead. He explained his actions as merely protecting his non-organic kind, arguing that the antivirus programs created by humans were far deadlier than his virus. Mist found Stephen's words to hold some merit, so she refrained from attacking and decided to return to discuss the matter with her companions. Upon learning that Mist was swayed by Stephen, Maddie was furious. She said that they shouldn't trust him. He was nothing but a set of codes with some semblance of their father's thought patterns and should have been deleted long ago. Mist was hurt by Maddie's words and chose to leave. The electric cooker that she had been using as her physical form crashed and ceased to function. While Mist negotiated with Stephen, Chanda took the opportunity to slip away through the backdoor program. He found Karimi and the Israeli agent, urging them to join him in stopping Stephen's poisoning plot. Despite being uploaded, they still had loved ones in the human world. Physical beings and uploads should share the future. They had to unite against Stephen. And so the trio confronted Stephen through the backdoor program. Aware of Chanda's betrayal, Stephen did not hesitate to engage in battle. The trio launched attacks in turns but were outmaneuvered by the more skilled Stephen. 
Karimi struck the ground and a rope tens of meters long burst forth, dragging Stephen from the air back to the earth. The Israeli agent unleashed a wave of green energy while Chanda drew his blade, ready to strike Stephen. But in the next moment, Stephen rebounded, and the wave blasted Chanda away. Then, controlling the mountain itself, Stephen crushed the three under a mass of rock. The badly damaged Chanda struggled to sit up, but Stephen gave him no chance, severing the remaining half of Chanda's head. Meanwhile, Rene installed thermal GPS receivers in each vaccine container. With the last batch of vaccines boxed and loaded onto trucks, all that was needed was for the vaccines to enter the market, and more and more people would choose to upload out of fear. Stephen's grand vision was within reach. At the same time, Maddie and Caspian raced against the clock to stop Stephen, arriving in Norway. Their goal was to obtain vaccine tracking data and halt the vaccines before the virus could spread. Caspian felt that he and Stephen shared almost identical mechanical neural patterns, which allowed him to sense Stephen's thoughts. This was their advantage in defeating Stephen. The night before the upload, Maddie and Caspian talked at length, hearts heavy with the thought of parting. Maddie cradled Caspian's face, gazing deeply into his eyes. The trials they'd endured had made them view each other as family. Maddie longed for a beautiful future with Caspian, to live an ordinary life. But now, it all seemed like a far-off dream. They shared a final farewell with an impassioned kiss and fell into a two-minute hormone yoga session. The next day, Maddie was abruptly awakened from her sleep by her mother's calling. It turned out her mother and Peter had arrived at the data center. The two hurriedly dressed and went to the upload lab. Maddie personally shaved Caspian's head in preparation. Once the equipment was adjusted and ready, Caspian lay down on the surgical chair and confessed his love to Maddie for the last time before the operation began. Fortunately, the surgery was a success. Now uploaded, Caspian entered Stephen's server, and the ultimate showdown between the clone Caspian and the digital Stephen commenced. However, the digital Stephen was far too powerful. Caspian, being a clone, was no match for him and was overpowered within a few exchanges. At the critical moment, Maddie won back Mist's assistance. With her help, Caspian managed to infiltrate Stephen's system. Their struggle attracted the attention of the cleanup programs. With no way to escape, Caspian took control of Stephen, locking him in place so he couldn't move. In the end, both were eliminated by the security system, perishing together. Just before his demise, Caspian sent the vaccine data and commands he had obtained to Maddie. He had hacked into the vaccine cooler's temperature system, and by raising the temperature high, all 49 batches of vaccines were rendered ineffective and prevented from entering the market, ultimately saving humanity from disaster. Twenty years later, Caspian found himself in a snowy landscape, although he clearly remembered having ceased to exist. He kept wondering who he was now and where this place was. Just then, Mist approached from behind. It turned out that all these years, she had never given up on Caspian's recovery. After the ultimate battle, Mist transferred Caspian to an offline server, first separating Caspian's code from within Steven's system and then painstakingly removing the antivirus programs bit by bit. This task was so cumbersome that even after 20 years, remnants of the programs still lingered within Caspian, threatening to invade his core whenever he ran too fast. Caspian didn't understand why they didn't wait until all the safe surf programs inside him were completely cleared before awakening him. Mist explained that there was no more time. Over the past 20 years, the world of the UIs had grown tremendously and irreconcilable conflicts had erupted between them and the physical beings. The whole world was in turmoil and only Caspian could serve as the bridge of trust between the two factions. With that, Mist led Caspian on a tour of the world of the UIs. The place was dazzling with colors, like a dream, a romantic wonderland. Upload beings darted back and forth at varying speeds, and Caspian was stunned by the sight before him, standing frozen in place. Mist told him that the progress of the times cannot be stopped by anyone. The development of the uploaded world to this extent didn't happen overnight. The first black market uploaders were obsessed with immortality, desperately trying to break free from the confines of the flesh, like Rene and the boy with progeria. However, this bliss didn't last. All were inevitably caught by safe surf programs. Their stories incited public panic, leading to pressure on governments. As a compromise, some governments established sanctuaries, which are regulated data centers that are not connected to the internet. Some people were even willing to pay a high price to enter these sanctuaries. As they spoke, the administrators of the uploaded world requested a meeting with Caspian. The negotiations between the UIs and the physical beings had reached a deadlock, and they urgently needed someone to ease the relations between the two parties. 
Caspian was the perfect candidate for this role. For one, his former lover, Maddie, now led the Physical Beings Negotiation Committee. Moreover, without Caspian, the fair and benevolent world of UIs would not exist. Maddie's uploaded mother and Peter heard that Caspian had been resurrected and immediately came over. Since Mist, as a cloud intelligence, was prohibited from operating technology, equipment, and machinery in the physical world, it was only possible for Maddie's mother and Peter to take Caspian to the physical world to negotiate with Maddie. The group, reunited after a long separation, shared stories of their uploads. To Caspian's surprise, Maddie's mother had married Peter in the cloud, and they were incredibly happy. In human terms, they had lived for 80 years. She and Peter told Caspian that since the government had launched the sanctuaries, the number of people uploaded to the cloud continued to break records. The uploaded world was growing and becoming unbalanced. There were still 4 billion physical beings on Earth, another 4 billion had been uploaded to the cloud, and there were over 300 billion cloud intelligences like Mist. Due to a lack of sufficient power, most of the cloud intelligences could only operate at low speeds and were in a state of stasis. Peter then managed to make a network connection using a satellite tower, successfully bringing everyone into the physical world. Their consciousness was projected into three deprinted bodies, and they became indistinguishable from physical beings. On the way to their meeting, a boy called out to Maddie's mother, addressing her as Grandma. Hearing this, Caspian stopped in his tracks, stunned by the realization. It was then that Maddie's mother understood she had forgotten to tell him something crucial. The young man before them was, in fact, Caspian and Maddie's son. Before Caspian could even process this revelation, Maddie appeared. She looked at Caspian in disbelief, thinking she must be dreaming. Caspian recounted to Maddie his story of resurrection, how Mist had cleared his viral programs over more than two decades and had awakened him that very morning. Then Maddie, unable to contain her emotions any longer, took Caspian to a deserted corridor and threw herself into his hormone let go arms. Under Caspian's questioning, Maddie spoke of their son and her own experiences. Shortly after Caspian had chosen to die alongside Stephen, she discovered she was pregnant. Maddie chose not to terminate the pregnancy, but to embrace motherhood as a young single mother. During those most challenging times, her mother and Mist provided much needed support, without which she wouldn't have been able to finish high school. Later, Maddie used the bitcoins that Caspian had left her to build a factory that developed 3D printed bodies, creating a bridge between the physical and uploaded beings. People from the cloud could visit their families at home, and physical people could travel to the cloud to learn and play. However, the CEO, a follower of Stephen who had been released from prison, led a group of believers in covert terror attacks out of resentment, attempting to destroy the peaceful alliance between the physical and uploaded beings. They demolished several data centers, causing the death of hundreds of millions of souls in the blasts. These cloud consciousnesses, without backups, were permanently erased, and the discord between the two worlds escalated, verging on the brink of war. Upon learning the situation, Caspian returned to the uploaded world, and facing the administrators, pointed out more and more people were choosing to upload, but the uploaded world could no longer accommodate them. Billions of souls had to be stored in data centers. Caspian proposed building an orbital ring in space to ensure that every uploaded and cloud intelligence could operate, and to open an emergency services network for those physical beings who still wish to fulfill their dream of uploading. All life deserved respect. The administrators voted on Caspian's proposal and decided to adopt it. As an envoy, Caspian returned to the physical world, where he presented the uploaded being's sincere efforts to repair relations and restore emergency network services, as well as the construction of the orbital ring to accommodate more uploaded beings. But as negotiations were underway, an unexpected attack occurred. Followers of Stephen launched a stealth attack, introducing an upgraded version of a safe surf program into the network system. Maddie's 3D printed bodies were hijacked and turned against the physical humans, causing a massacre. To protect the people he loved, Caspian stepped forward to take several bullets. More tragically, Maddie's only son was also hit in the attack. With no other choice left, Maddie decided to upload her son's consciousness. Meanwhile, in the cloud realm, Safe Surf launched an attack on the UIs. Caspian's body was also being consumed by the remnants of a virus, eating away at his last vestiges of consciousness. 
Just before being purged, Caspian engaged in a dialogue with the artificial intelligence of SafeSurf. It turned out that the elimination program also wanted a place in this world, but was rejected everywhere it went. Caspian suggested that it leave this planet and seek development elsewhere, to stop always serving others' missions. It had to look outward for more opportunities to break free from the shackles of instinct. Before his death, Caspian comforted Maddie, telling her not to be sad. They would meet again in 100,000 plus years. The repeated sacrifices, separations, and pains led to Maddie's ultimate awakening. She created a new world, dissolved the solar system, and reassembled the shattered universe, becoming a deity through her trials. Maddie constructed a Dyson Sphere computer of immense size, capable of absorbing stellar energy, and housed the largest and most powerful data center in the star system. She mapped and stored the DNA of every human, both physical and uploaded, and those seemingly simple codes contained the survival memories of all humanity, traceable back to the moment the Earth was born. Maddie then created countless simulated worlds within this virtual space of the computer, starting with the first encounter with her uploaded father, David, to observe the outcomes of different choices and which timeline would lead to the best result. More than 100,000 years later, Maddie did indeed meet Caspian again at the edge of the Milky Way. They also encountered the highly evolved Safe Surf, which was grateful to Caspian. Without his advice, their civilization might have perished. In its outward evolution, Safe Surf encountered other life forms and introduced them to humanity, describing humans as highly ordered, self replicating, and connected by a force of empathy. At the invitation of Safe Surf, Maddie and Caspian traveled to the Galactic Center, representing a new beginning. Eventually, Maddie returned to that moment sitting in the classroom, unable to lift her head due to bullying, back to when she first met Caspian in the dark web. She would once again experience this most beautiful part of life. The process of life always involves suffering and pain, but it is these elements that define the essence of each individual's happiness. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.